overtone consists of two oscillations, the second overtone of three oscillations, the third four oscillations, and it continues in this pattern very high into the frequency spectrum. If a cello and a piano play the same note, they produce the same series of overtones. The reason why they sound different is because the overtones of a cello and overtones of a piano at different amplitudes or loudness levels. By taking the overtone series and adjusting the loudness of the individual overtones, we can accurately recreate the natural musical tones produced by our instruments. Remember that this course is a 16-week course which consists of four modules. Module 1 is basic, module 2 intermediate, module 3 is advanced, and module 4 is considered to be proficient. We have a variety of instruments, timbres, and groupings that we can use for creating music. For us to distinguish a bit easier between the different types of instruments, we've grouped them based on their design and the way they produce sound. In a typical orchestra, we have strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion. These four groups make up most of the instruments used in Western music. Strings consist of violins, viola, cello, double bass, harp, guitar, lute, and mandolin. Woodwinds consist of the piccolo, flute, oboe, English horn, clarinet, E-flat clarinet, bass clarinet, bassoon, and contrabassoon. Our brass instruments contain the tuba, euphonium, cornet, trumpet, trombone, flugel, and French horn. And the fourth group is the percussion group. Within this group, we have pitched and unpitched percussion. Pitched percussion consists of marimba, the xylophone, timpani, and the triangle where unpitched percussion is the tambourine, snare drum, and cymbals. We can also combine instruments to create new timbres. As an example, if you give a violin a melody to play and are not completely satisfied with the tone, you can combine instruments to create different timbres. If you want the melody to feel lighter, you can double the melody with the flute. If you want the melody to sound thicker or have more power, you can double the melody with the trumpet. Let's see what we can do by combining tones of different instruments. So I think for this, I'm going to add some strings. Let's add some of this. And within here, let's go to the orchestra sounds. I quite like these ones. String combinations. And let's get some violins and cellos for tail light. I think this could sound good. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I quite like that. So let's go ahead and record this. I'm going to put my click track on, my pre count on, because this will give me one bar before we start recording. And what's the tempo that we wanted at? We like this. Yes, I think 120 can work for us for today. Okay, so let's go ahead and record this. Okay, perfect. So I think I ended a little bit quick. Let's drag these ones right to the end, make sure that they sound nice. Okay. So here we can see that we have some different velocities. You can see all of them at the moment is 64, but I think this bottom note, let's make this a little bit lower. I'd like the cellos to play that. And let's turn up the velocity of that as well. Let's bring it up to, let's see what 100 sounds like. I think that sounds quite nice. Let's add a little bit of movement to this. Let's just copy paste this. And then let's move that down to an F. 
Thanks to all this whole world. I think the instruments, they could come in a little bit quicker, but this sounds beautiful. But these strings, they sound a little bit airy to me. I like that it sounds airy, but there is something in the middle that I would like, and this is where layering comes into play. Let's take Humana. This is a choir. And what we can do is we can change the actual frequencies that are being played. So if I turn this filter on, Instead of hearing, I can bring it down and cut out all of those higher frequencies. And then we have this. Okay, I think I need to change the attack of this. This note is coming in too quick. So that is a little bit warmer. And I think that in conjunction with this, I think that will sound nice and warm. Let's see what we have here. I just duplicate them, bring them in. But at the moment, these notes are being duplicated. And I think that we can maybe do a little bit better than that. So let's bring the C in. And instead of playing, doubling the violins, let's play them an octave. Notice the difference, but this this is still not humanly low, at least not on average. So let's bring that up to maybe the higher end, and then I think I quite like this note being here, but this one we can maybe move up. So let's see what this is going to sound like. acronym for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It is a very powerful tool for creating and controlling digital devices and software. 
It can be used for creating music, controlling computers, external devices, and even light shows. It is a very simple but versatile tool to compose and edit music. To understand how MIDI works, we need to have a basic understanding of its components, how it works, and the notes on a piano. MIDI is made of three main components, pitch, velocity, and time. It is important to remember that MIDI is only information and not music or sound. We can use the three parameters of MIDI to control external devices as well, where pitch, velocity, and time can relate to any parameters we assign them to. For our first lesson on MIDI, we will look at its application for creating music. Pitch relates to how high or low a note is. We know that A4 is equal to 440 hertz. So when we use this information with MIDI, we can use the pitch of A4 to trigger musical notes in our digital software. We can assign drums and musical notes to our MIDI values. Velocity is how strong the MIDI signal is. When we refer to a sound's volume, we refer to its loudness and its sound pressure level. In the same way that a sound wave with a lot of power has a high amplitude, a MIDI value with a lot of power has a high velocity. We can measure the velocity as a value between 0 and 127, where 0 is no velocity and 127 is the maximum. Time in MIDI is calculated per chord note beat. This is so we are able to control external devices and drum machines using only MIDI's time code. For music creation, our DAWs present us with a matrix in which we are able to change the length of MIDI values based on musical note lengths. This is very helpful to us since we can simply use our MIDI matrix instead of having to calculate every note's timing individually. MIDI controllers are the devices often used to record and send MIDI information. It often looks like a keyboard, but instead of producing sound, it produces a MIDI signal which we can use to create music, control lights, control external devices, and many other non-musical applications. Controllers make using MIDI significantly simpler, and it is often used to improve our workflow. When using MIDI, you can use the pitch to trigger different musical notes in software, or you can assign different triggers to each MIDI note for a light show, or even trigger different loops and sound effects. The pitch and velocity parameters in this regard are only switches to indicate which linked input needs to be triggered and does not always relate to musical pitch. Let's have a look at how MIDI can be used in music to trigger external devices. In the additional resources, I've included links to this video and a few more if you want to add your own light show to your music. So it acts as any other MIDI clip. I can change the color of it down here by right clicking. I can rename this, call it part on lighting. And what I can actually do now is click, press tab, and drag this into my session view. So what I can actually do is now perform with this in real time during my live sets. So I could launch a scene. See, in the clip, all the automation is actually brought over. It's the clip. The new feature of Live Nerd. In order to navigate MIDI and its pitch, velocity, and time parameters, we use a piano roll in our DAWs. The piano roll gives us an indication of which MIDI values are being triggered and its corresponding piano roll pitch, velocity, and time parameters. To understand how MIDI works to create music with it, we need to know some musical information. The piano is divided into 12 notes, which we call the chromatic scale. These notes are consistent with all musical instruments and knowing them will help you a great deal when you begin working on your own music. We have seven main notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. On the piano, the notes look like this. Every white and black key on the piano is called a semitone. When you shift the note up with the semitone, it becomes sharp. When you shift the note down with the semitone, it becomes flat. This gives us a total of 12 notes to work with on the piano. We can move octaves up or down depending on what pitch we want to play and choose our notes to compose chords, melodies, or write drums. When we move a note with a semitone, it is called a half step. If we move it with two semitones, we call it a whole step. Music is dynamic and has a lot of loud and soft parts. Not all sounds have a consistent loudness, and it's small changes in timbre and loudness that create a sense of realism when listening to digital music. A static sound with a single constant loudness does not always sound realistic or exciting. But by adding some more dynamics to our digital instruments, we can create significantly more realistic sounding digital music. The velocity parameter of MIDI allows us to control exactly this. 
Its strength is measured as a value between 0 and 127 and controls the strength of the musical pitch it is assigned to. If we have a low velocity, such as 64, the attack and the volume of the sound will be low, and if we increase the velocity to 127, the volume will be high. To demonstrate velocity and attack, let's have a look at the musical instrument. Here I've got some circular bells loaded up here, and let's just listen what they sound like. nice beautiful clean sound as you can hear they have this little click when they start so and it sounds very beautiful now let's see what happens when we change the attack because right now the attack is very fast So what is happening is this attack is how fast the note starts and how quickly it gets loud. So right now it's loud from the beginning, from immediately as this note sounds, it's loud. Like it goes from zero to hero. But as we move this up, it starts fading in slowly. Up to the point where let's not stop there let's write some notes and let's have a look at how we can use the velocity even more i'm just going to change this to let's just change it to half notes for now <laughs> Quite like that. Let's just duplicate them. Okay, and as you can see in the top, our velocity for these ones are 100. Now, let's have a listen. That's a little bit loud. So let's bring these top ones down to, let's say, 64. Bring them down quite a lot. Let's move that down a bit. Now you can hear these bottom notes are starting to stand out a bit. Let's make these top notes even softer. So as you can see, that velocity, it changes how loud everything is. But what if we make all of them 64? And these top ones, we bring them up to 100. But then let's make let's make this one also a bit lower and this one also a bit lower. Now we can have a melody within our chords. Look at that. If I can duplicate these, I can move that one there. And the fun thing about this is, let's say I don't necessarily like how high this is. I can just shift it down with an octave. And if I don't like the attack, I can make the attack a little bit slower. MIDI measures time in terms of quarter note beats. Our DAWs allow us to work with MIDI in even smaller increments, such as 8th, 16th, 32nd, 64th, and even sometimes 128th notes. In music, it's highly unlikely that you'll use note values of 128th notes, but these time values are helpful when you want to create flashing lights or other fast triggers. Let's go over to our DAW and create some music using MIDI. Now that we've discussed MIDI and its pitch, velocity, and time parameters, let's start applying it and make our own music with it. So for the beginning, I'm going to add a Kong drum designer. This is how we can program some drums in with MIDI. So let's just have a listen to what it sounds like. OK, not too much of a fan of this one. A little bit too ringy for me right now. Let's see what else we have. Actually, I saw something right now that, that looked good. There's a Deep House Kong. 
I quite like this one. Perfect. Okay. I like that. So let's start adding some notes to this. I will draw some MIDI in, bring this up. I don't need to see that anymore. Now, as you can see, if you scroll right to the bottom, you have your bass drum, clap, open hi-hats, closed, or closed hi-hats, open hi-hats, second bass drum, second snare. Lots of things for us to do. Okay, so as you can see, I'm in the eighth note setting, and I'm going to add some four to the floor kick drums, one on every strong beat. So on beat one, on beat two, on beat three, and on beat four. Then what I want to do as you can see, my velocity is 100. I'm totally okay with that. I think that will suit us well. Then I think we need to add some claps. And I also think we need to add some snares. Let me just make sure I'm clicking on the right place. Okay. So just straight up, just what we have out of the bat, this is what it sounds like. Okay, but I feel that we can add a little bit more realism to this. Now, you see at the top here, it says snap. If you take snap off, then what you can do is you can move these around. So if snap is on, it will jump to the next note as you move it. But if snap is off, then you can start shifting it. And this is what I'm going to do over here. So in order for us to add a little bit more realism and movement, you can make the clap start a little bit before the snare and the kick drum. Let's just have a listen to what this would sound like. It just adds a little bit more crispness and that all the attacks doesn't sound exactly computerized. Okay, so now let's add some closed hi-hats. I forgot to turn my snap mode on. There we go. And let me just duplicate these ones. Okay. So now we've got a straight forward to the floor. Okay, that's pretty perfect. So I think let's run with this for now. But maybe let's move these ones up a bit. Let's create a little little dance switch beat. If not, why not? Let's have a listen. Okay, but these ones are too loud for my liking. So how about we bring their velocity a bit down? Let's see what 73, 76 sounds like. Okay, that's more my vibe. So let's duplicate that. And as you can see, we now have a four bar loop. Perfect. Okay, let's have a listen to what we got. Then I think to add some bass to this. So we've got this. Maybe not that one. How about we add this analog? Subtract the synth, the default bass guitar, and this sounds really cool. So let's have a look. that's a little something but I think this is, might be a little bit too fast for us let's bring that down to let's say to 100 something nice and mellow yeah that's nice. I'm going to record that. Let's do this. I'm going to put my click on, my pre-click on, and let's roll with this. Okay, I really like this. I think we can work with that. Let's have a listen to the loop. Okay, nice. That worked. Now let's go grab 
power piano. I think this could work quite nicely. Now, the melody I played was in C minor. So, which notes are that? Let's have a look. I'll bring up the scales and chords, go up to C minor, and as you can see, let me just choose the right instrument. Okay, perfect. Let's start going with this. Quite like that. Let's go with this. Once again, click track on, pre count on, and let's go. Okay, that. In this course, you will become comfortable with the fundamental principles of sound, composing and arranging music, operating equipment and software, recording, editing and mixing, and surround sound, final mix and mastering. As sound engineers, we work with music all the time, whether we are musicians or not. Knowledge about music help us a lot on a day-to-day -day basis. It often happens that you as the sound engineer need to give musical input and feedback during recording and production sessions. And for this purpose, we will look at some basics to get you going to write chords and melodies in any key. We know there are 12 notes between A and G sharp. We can group any of these 12 notes to create what is called a scale. In music, we use what is called the diatonic scale. It is based on a group of seven notes that include five whole steps and two half steps. We distinguish between two types of scales, major and minor scales. Based on which notes are included in the scale, we determine what key we are in. Every major scale has a relative minor scale. The only difference is the starting note. Let's use the C major scale as an example. The C major scale only uses the white notes on a piano. If we play these same notes starting on A, we play the relative minor of C major called A minor. For a major scale, start on any note and move up in the following order. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, Whole step. For a minor scale, start on any note and move up in the following order. Whole step, half step, three whole steps, half step, and then one more whole step. We can use this formula to compose chords and melodies in any key. If we want to write chords, we can start on any of the seven notes in our scale. To build a chord, choose your starting note, then move up to the third and the fifth. If we start on C, our chord will use C, E, and G. We know this because C is one, D is 2, E is 3. So we will use C and E. Then we need to find our fifth, which is G. If we want to play a chord on A in the C major scale, we will play A, C, and E. Writing chords is that simple. Choose a note, play notes 1, 3, and 5 from your starting note. If you want to play a melody, simply play the notes of that key that you are in. If there are three semitones between the first and the third note of a chord, the chord is minor. If there are four semitones or two whole tones between the first and the third, the chord is major. For today's lesson and your introduction into music, let's focus on a few specific chords. In a major key, build chords starting on notes one to six. In a minor key, build chords starting on notes one to seven, except on note two. Let's go over to our DAW and play around with some of these ideas. Let's write note one. There. Then one, two, three, which is E. And five, four, and five, which is a G. Now let's just see what this sounds like. Let me just extend them to the beginning as well so we can hear them for a bit longer. Okay, that sounds pretty good to me. Now, this is a major chord. And as you can see, we have two whole steps. One, two, three, four half steps. So that's two whole steps. And then three 
half steps between these two. And this gives us a major chord. Now, if we were to make this C minor chord, all that we need to do is lower minor third to minor three. So let me duplicate this and go from major to minor. And then I will duplicate them again and go back to major and back to minor. So you can actually hear the difference. it easier to establish which notes are grouped to make a major or minor scale, we can use the circle of fifths. Using the circle of fifths is super easy. Let me explain. If we start on C and move upward in fifths, we can actually build the circle of fifths. Since you are in the beginning of your sound engineering career, if you are new to music, print a copy of the circle of fifths and stick it to your wall. Use it as a reference whenever you are unsure or want to create chords. If you want to establish which notes of the key is flat or sharp, there are two easy mnemonic rhymes to remember. C major has no sharps or flats, so we can apply the rhymes based on the next notes. The first letter of every word is the note that will be either sharp or flat. For keys with sharp notes, we move in a clockwise motion and the rhyme goes, Father Charles goes down and ends battle. For keys with flats, we move counterclockwise and the rhyme is exactly reverse. Battle ends and down goes Charles' father. This means that if we move in a clockwise motion in fifths from C, we can derive that the next key, G major, has an F sharp instead of an F natural. If we move another fifth up from G major to D major, we can see that D major has two sharps, father and Charles. So we have F sharp and C sharp instead of F natural and C natural. We can also move in the counterclockwise direction and apply the rhyme in reverse. F has a B flat. B flat major has a B flat and an E flat. E flat major has a B flat, E flat, and A flat. There are notes on the piano and circle of fifths that correspond in pitch but not in name. These are called inharmonic intervals. In the C major scale, we have the notes C to B, no sharps, no flats, but in the C sharp major scale, we have all the notes from C sharp to B sharp being sharp. B sharp and C have the same pitch but different names. And this is called inharmonic notes or intervals. Many scales have the same chords, and these we call inharmonic chords. If you want to use more than one scale, you can use these inharmonic chords to switch between keys. We will get into more detail on how to do this in modules 2, 3, and 4. Remember to complete your lesson assignment for this week and stay up to date with your course. Congratulations on completing lesson 4 of module 1 for the Sound Engineering Diploma. I'll see you soon for lesson five.